Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking more about Ruby closures, about the closures that are actually built into the Ruby language. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge, because SE Geek begins now. Alright, in this episode we're going to be talking about Groovy methods. So, you know, just like Java methods, if you do just dot def uh, method, oops, if I can type, method name, and we'll say that it takes, I don't know, arg1, arg2, we can Hint. Yeah. And we'll just do something like this. And then we'll call that method name actually. Change that to, oops, <laughs> change that to print args. And we'll give that one, comma, two. Okay, that should be good enough for a test. So we run that and it prints our two arguments. That's great. So one of the things that you can do with Groovy is you can define default values in methods. So we can give this a default value of say 3. So if I run this again we get the same answer. But if I neglect this argument and run it we get 1 and 3. Or if I do null here well, we'll get null because we actually explicitly passed null. So this gives you a little bit more flexibility with um, how uh, variables actually get passed in, and you can default things so that uh, you know you have a default there if it's not passed in, um, which can be useful. So another thing I want to talk about with uh, Groovy methods is by default they are all public. Um, and like Python, uh, you can describe it as, oops, hive it if you like, but it doesn't really mean anything to Groovy. This, this is kind of like, you know, when you're in Python or in your, if you're in uh, JavaScript, if you describe anything as being private, well, you're just saying, Please do not mess with this uh, method, you know, just treat it as it's a private method. But, you know, in those particular languages like Groovy, you're considered to be an adult and you shouldn't mess with those uh, methods because there are API methods that could change. Now, Groovy is the same way. Uh, private doesn't mean a whole lot to it unless you're calling into a Java compile class that has private and then it will respect it unless you uh, play around with metaprogramming which you can do all kinds of crazy things with but that's an advanced topic for another episode so that's just one of the things to keep aware of uh, you know everything within uh, for, for methods they're private uh, they're they're public by default um, Let's see. That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with methods, except for uh, one other thing to uh, keep aware of is that by default, the last line is returned from a method, unless you know you specify the method to be void. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really mean anything here. So if I did, not sure what this will do. It might just throw an error. Oh no return to null because this doesn't really return anything but if I put like one here 
I could do that. Now, in my development experience, I actually like to actually to put the return statements just because it's it's a little more explicit and you can see what's getting returned, and especially if you have you know any relatively complex methods, you know that could be actually relevant. Now, if if you don't want to, you can leave it off. It's kind of like semicolons and you know other things within Groovy that are optional. But I, as a general rule, I would you know keep keep the return statements in just to be you know explicit with what you return. And I guess that's pretty much all for methods. I'll talk to you next time.